Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is King Noosme, and I know what you're thinking. King, where have you been all this time? I was in the woods gathering bears to make the new hit rap group. <laughs> And coincidentally, our movie has a similar premise. I'm talking about the one and only movie, The Country Bears, made by Disney in 2002. Now, I vaguely remember this movie as a kid. I like saw it maybe on Disney Channel once or twice, but I remembered nothing about it besides Big Bears and Big Al. For some reason, I remembered Big Al. I don't know why. He's lodged in my brain for some reason, and he's adorable, and you're going to love him. I'm chubby, but I'm queer. <laughs> So the movie starts off and we get to meet the four bears, the country bears, the big boys of the movie. It just shows their last show, the farewell tour that they did before they broke up as a group and started going their own ways. But it, the song they sing actually kind of slaps. Like I'm, I caught myself jamming out to it. It was pretty fun. I like it. And also they're like slant when they jump and stuff on the stage, they like shake the whole stage. They, at one point he, they even break it. And I didn't know this. One of them has just a guitar with one string on it, which doesn't make sense. What are you, you're just going to play it in E? A, a G string. There's not much you can do with just one string. Not much music you can make. Maybe he was just that good. Maybe I need to actually listen to his music and not judge him by just his one string thing. The next scene, we get to meet the main character of the movie. His name is Barry Barrington, which is a dumb name just to start off with. Like all the other bears have like kind of cool names. It's there's like Tennessee O'Neill, Zeb Zuber, <laughs> Zeb fucking Zuber. <laughs> They just gave up. And it's not like Barry, like, you know, B-A-R-R-Y. It's bear, like the word bear with a Y. That's all it's, that's what it's spelled like. It's very dumb. I, that is my one complaint about this movie. Everything else is going to be absolutely just love and kindness and tender care. Just like a mother bear. That rhymed. I love myself. So Barry has a little beginning life crisis. Mom, am I adopted? <laughs> Of course not, honey. He is a bear that got adopted by human parents, but they haven't told him yet. And he just believes he's human. And for some reason, they seem to see him as human. The only one who doesn't see him as a human and sees him as a bear is his brother, who is a dick. He is not the nicest kid in the world. <laughs> Barry asks, am I adopted? And they're like, no, why would you think that? And he's like, well, I'm different. I feel different sometimes. Me and Dex, which is his brother, look different. He has different colored eyes and freckles, and I don't. That's the difference. That's it. There's no nothing else is different. That that's the only two things that are wrong about him. But the dad and mom obviously they obviously know he is a bear, and they just they don't want him to feel like he is different. So they're being good parents. But the dad gives the worst analogy ever to make him try to feel better. Listen. Last week it was casual Friday at the office and I guess I forgot and I wore a tie. <laughs> and boy, did I feel different. It was, yeah. But I just don't understand. Like, well, how can you go? I think he's like four, 13, 14 in this movie. I have no clue. I have to look it up. I don't want to look it up. I'm not going to look it up. I'm just going to spread misinformation online like a normal person. He's like 14 years old in this movie and he, he's having this little crisis where he feels like he's adopted, which he is. And his parents are like trying to make him believe he's a human, but he knows deep down inside he's a bear. He has an obsession with the country bears because I guess they look like him and make him feel normal. I can't imagine just having like a bear son. That would be awesome. First of all, if I had like a talking bear son, I love bears. So I, I would be down to just adopt one. If you know a talking bear for adoption, let me know. So asshole brother, I mean, very nice and kind brother Dex. Can't say mean things on YouTube anymore. I forgot about it. Dex gets in trouble for, you know, making Barry feel like he doesn't belong in the family. So he gets mad and proves to Barry that he doesn't belong in the family by pulling out literal receipts. He pulls out his birth certificate. He's like, here's my birth certificate. Here's yours. And Barry's was an, a shock collar from being a bear where they would shock him and so he, he pretty much showed Barry that yes you're adopted you don't belong here you need to leave and so Barry decides to do just that he's gonna go find the country bears and become who he's supposed to be be with who he's supposed to be with I do want to point out Barry is probably the most adorable thing ever like just look at him walk down this driveway D look at him and tell me he is not just the, the most adorable character he's in the top 10 most adorable characters that I've ever seen I, I love him he has my whole heart and no one will ever touch him or you will have to go through the wrath of me. Get him run away. It's so cute. Why is he so cute? So apparently in this world they live in, bears are like intermingled with humans, apparently, because there's just a mailman who was a bear. There's a bear on a tractor. Like I know the group broke up, but like I thought that they were the only ones. 
I thought maybe Barry was the only one as well. So is this like a world where bears are just super smart and like evolved with humans to like be like humans? Because that would be sick. Should probably explain what's going on. Barry's gonna go to the Country Bear Hall, which was a place made for people who felt different and also wanted to learn music. So Barry ran away, left a note for his mother and family, telling them that he's going to find his destiny. So Barry makes it to Country Bear Hall and just in time to meet the asshole villain, I guess, of the movie. Reed Thimple, Christopher Walken's character. Now, Reed Thimple is a banker who took over the bank that the Country Bears used to fund the hall and they're a little behind on their payments. Six years behind. And Reed does not um, like that. He wants his money now. So in four days, he's going to tear down Country Bear Hall and put something else there. And Reed's just an asshole after Barry gives them 25 cents to enter the hall. And then Reed's like, good luck on that kid. <laughs> Fucking makes me want to punch him in the throat. The last Country Bear to be at Country Bear Hall is Henry Taylor. And he's showing Barry around the now abandoned Country Bear Hall. It's full of cobwebs and kind of dirty and nobody's been in there for years. And he talks about how people like Jimi Hendrix used to play in the Country Bear Hall, how they used to be this big phenomenon and now nobody really cares about country music anymore. I wish country music would die, except for this kind of country music. The music in this movie is Amazing. If country music sounded like this and not, I grab my beer and I drive my truck and then I take my little girl and get her some ducks. I don't know. While Henry was showing Barry around, he was talking about how they can't really save the place anymore. No one cares about the country bears. And Barry's like, let's just throw a concert. Let's get the band back together. It's one of those movies. We're gonna get the band back together. And Henry's like, no, it's a stupid idea. Nobody wants to watch the country bears anymore. And if you think about it, if the country bears were that big of a phenomenon back then, people would definitely want to see the country bears again. Like, if the Beatles were still alive, I'm sure they'd still be making concerts and kicking it if they were that big, like, big enough to where people like Jimi Hendrix would come and play in their, their own, like, concert hall. Like, people know who they are still, I, I guarantee it. But Henry blows him off and's like, no, that's a stupid idea, and then talks to Big Al about it. Big Al does his Big Al thing and fixes everything in very few words. Get the band back together, Tom. You could do that. A, a concert? Yeah, you need equipment and... Tickets and promotion and everything. I don't know. I could do that. I fucking, I fucking love Big Al. Big Al is, Big Al is someone we need to protect. Someone that needs a barrier around him at all times so he will never die. We need Big Al in every single movie ever from now on. Just to be in the background. And just to go, we can do that. Like... Two officers come to investigate the disappearance of good old Barry, and they have an awesome name together. It's Ham and Cheats. Ham and Cheats. Yeah. <laughs> we get that all the time. Funny, funny joke. Made me kind of chuckle a little bit. They're getting information on Barry. And so, she, first of all, they're like, what's his name? She's like, his name is Barry. And so he starts B-E-R. She's like, no, no, B-E-A-R. Like in the German spelling of the name. <laughs> and that's what I was laughing at. My mental state is deteriorating the more I'm watching this movie. It the even the old 2002 bad jokes are making me laugh. I, I what am I supposed to do now? I hate to say this, Dex is like he's a jerk, but he is the only one with sense. He's the only one that has common sense. I guess in this world, if bears just intermingle with humans, wouldn't that mean like he's racist? Is Dex racist against bears? Is he racist against his own brother? That'd be so weird. Imagine that'd be so weird. Dex, are you racist right now? Anyways, Dex is like, like, come on, guys. Like, he's a bear. And he's supposed to be out in the wilderness. And then the cop's like, we'll find your brother for you and gives him a little honorary deputy pin. They ask for uh, identification. Is there any marks on his, his body that, you know, we can tell a difference and like identify him by? The, the parents are like, oh, no, really? No, not at all. <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, I don't think that there's a, not that many identifying marks he has on his body. And Dex, the only normal person apparently, it's like, oh yeah, he has brown hair all oh, over his body. God. In order to help them track Barry down, they give him a picture and they're like, oh, he's a uh, fourth grader. So even the cops can't tell that he's a bear. Maybe we're the crazy one. Maybe the audience and Dex are the only ones that are like, tripping like they're not act what if these are like normal people but only we see them as bears did you ever think about that that's a crazy conspiracy did i just make a country bears conspiracy in 2023 i'm gonna go down that rabbit hole there's gonna be a an iceberg country bears iceberg on my channel here soon <laughs> i'm starting to notice about let's see maybe 30 minutes into this movie um it's just very campy this movie's very campy and maybe that's why it, it has bad reviews it's not a bad it is a bad movie what am i saying 
It's just not like, I don't know, it's enjoyable. It's a fun little turn your brain off and watch movie. Next, they show us Fred Betterhead, the harmonica player, and honestly, the best harmonica player in the world. No one can change my mind from that. I'm just promoting the Country Bears this whole, this is a one big promotion. But Fred Betterhead works in a TV studio. All, everyone there just like knows him from the Country Bears. Like he meets this new singer girl and she's like, you're Fred Betterhead from the Country Bears. And then Barry shows up, Barry's like, you're Fred Betterhead from the Country Bears. And so he, they're, I just don't understand how they, they flopped so hard if everybody in the world knows who the Country Bears are. Don't, don't, don't make sense. Don't, shouldn't they still be making music? Wouldn't that be like, ideal <laughs> but henry talks to fred and tells him they're getting the band back together and obviously they need him the inventor of the stage dive to get there so that they can have the whole band together and fred agrees only if their old publicist rip holland is in and rip holland is um a bum now he he sets up office in what looks like a uh, sam's club and uh gets kicked out all right this town's called nutville i just nut joke i love it Nut joke. Great. All right. They mention this um, talent show they used to have. I have to mention this because it's important to later on in the movie. They mention a talent show that they had and they, they cut this man that was an arm singer. I'll give you a second to guess what arm singing is. It's fart. It, it's the armpit fart. He was an armpit farter professionally and um he didn't make it far that's all i'm gonna say if you want to learn more you gotta watch the rest of the video what can i tell you you gotta watch the rest of the video eh? big al has the same like three jokes this whole movie and i am completely okay with it what's that a sign oh and be careful of mine grass what's that that there's a sign didn't want anyone parking on my grass out front. What is that? That's a sign. I'm a Big Al stan, that's for sure. I need a shirt that has Big Al on it. Big Al accidentally um, spills the beans to good old banker boy. The banker does not like that they're getting the band back together, so now he's going to do everything in his power to not let that happen. The next bear they're going to pick up is Zeb Zuberman, who is now an alcoholic and hangs out in a, in one bar with Queen Latifah as the bartender. We need more Queen Latifah. I need more Queen Latifah in my life. Let me know if any good, bad Queen Latifah movies, if there is any, ever. I feel like every movie she's in, she just kills the role. I forgot to mention Zeb Zuberman is the fiddle player. That's something that you probably I should know. I found something that's a little um, alarming to me. Uh, they let Barry into the bar, like 14 year old kid Barry into a bar. Granted, it's honey. They're only selling honey. Like if you look in the background, it's all honey. So wait, does honey get bears drunk? Is that a thing? Bear got drunk on honey after a brown bear in Turkey seems to have gotten their paws on some mad honey. The cub was in for a surprise. It was believed to have become intoxicated following consumption of an excessive amount of product. Bears can get drunk. That's fucking sick, bro. Next time you have a rager, make sure they invite your local bear because they can get drunk and party, apparently. <laughs> Barry goes up to Cha-Cha, which is Queen Latifah's character, and makes a deal with her because Zeb Zuberman owes her a lot of money. He has been a freeloader for a little while. He sets up a little musical duel with Queen Latifah's band and Zeb Zuberman's fiddle. So it's like a one against four situation, but really it's like a one-on-one -on -one because he just goes against the guitar player that's like across from him. And um, it doesn't go well at first. He has to warm up a little bit. But then he shreds the fuck out of that fiddle. So cool. I would love to learn how to play the fiddle. I feel like that'd be like really fun. Or like a banjo. Imagine me just like in the middle of videos, just like ding, 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 ding. And like that, wouldn't that be so cool? Anyways, if, um, if Zeb Zuberman wins, all his debt is forgiven and he can go on his way. And if he loses, um, Queen Latifah gets the bear bus, the whole bus. The whole mildewy bus is all hers. So, um, high stakes, I would say. Yeah, high stakes. Needless to say, Zeb wins, of course, because that's how movies work. The cops pull up to Country Bear Hall and they talk to Big Al for a second, complimenting his grass, which he needed. They ask him, have he seen Barry? And Big Al gives the best answer ever. Yep. It's all they really needed. And he also tells them that Henry took Barry on the tour bus. And so they just rule it as a kidnapping automatically. Now they believe that the country bears have now kidnapped a younger bear and are on the road on the run. So that's fun. Next up on the list to go get is Tennessee O'Neill. And uh, apparently Tennessee O'Neill and his lover Trixie broke up a long time ago. He was so heartbroken that he decided to get himself a job to make him feel better. 
You know what that job was? Marriage counseling. Yes, the thing that helps every man get over his ex. People who are doubtful in their own marriages. He somehow fixes them by crying about his ex. <laughs> The police get the word that Barry is missing and that Henry is the one that took him. And so they put it on the news and they put their bus on the news and, and now they're in some big trouble. And not only, of course, the battery dies right when I'm talking, right when I'm talking. Hi, welcome back. Nothing happened. Nothing at all. You didn't see anything. The cops come to the diner that they were eating at and um, the bears just disappear. They're not there anymore. But luckily, one of the cops looks outside the window and sees the bus and the bears getting on the bus. So now they're in a high speed chase and there's only one way to get rid of cops through the car wash. Everybody knows that. And these cops are stupid. They open their windows in the car wash just to, so they could see better. Why, why didn't you just wait at the other side of the car wash? Maybe, maybe that will help. I don't know. Maybe that would work. I don't know. I feel like that's a good plan. I, I just have a feeling that that maybe that maybe that's the best plan that you guys could have went with. But I, I I don't know. Who am I? I'm just I'm just a stupid normie human citizen. I'm just a citizen that knows nothing about law enforcement. They could have just stopped the bus and explained everything that's going on. Barry, they could have got Barry and been like, oh Barry's like, oh I ran away from home. I didn't feel like I belonged. Now I'm gonna help them get the band back together. And then the cops could have had some redemption arc. And they're just like, oh you know what? We'll let you go. We'll go let your parents know where you're at. Or like. At least brought Barry home and then let the parents go. I don't know. There's a lot of ways they could have fixed this instead of going on a high speed chase and then actually making them criminals. Barry gets a little homesick and decides to call home and let his parents know that he is okay. But his parents aren't home because they're out looking for him. So Dex picks up the phone. Dex thinks he's cool now because, you know, he ran away from home and now the cops are looking for him and he's in a lot of trouble. So obviously now he's the cool brother. But Barry lets him know that he's okay and that he's with the country bears. He hasn't been kidnapped. He found his purpose and he's going to help them get back together and become the country bears again and that he's not coming home because he doesn't belong there it's time to face the facts he doesn't belong with them dex tries to to let him know you are you do belong with us you're my brother but barry won't listen and he hangs up the phone so sad actually sad makes me want to cry i think they just had a fourth wall break in this movie there is no way they're, they're watching a, an old tv show of themselves and then at the end of the episode they're like that was bad did they know this movie was going to be bad from the beginning did they make it on purpose to be bad so it if they know it's bad, is it actually bad or is it actually good? I mentioned earlier that Tennessee is very sad because him and his girlfriend Trixie broke up. Well, they had to shoehorn Trixie in the movie somehow. So Trixie just so happens to be at some kind of bar nearby this motel that they were staying at. So Tennessee gives her a little visit and, um, you know, he lets her know that he's there and he's listening to her. So she decides to sing one of his songs that he wrote for her. And they do a little duo and fall back in love, you know, shoehorn the scene in so they can put Trixie in the movie. I don't even know if Trixie's in the original ride. Did I even talk about the Disney ride, Country Bear Jamboree. Henry calls the final member and the singer of the band, Ted Betterhead, and Ted has um better things to do. He, he does the, oh no, we're breaking up, and then hangs up on them and doesn't join the Country Bears. And this leaves Henry in a little bit of a spot. Henry doesn't want to break Barry's heart and tell him that he didn't agree to join the Country Bears. So he just lies and tells Barry that, yeah, he said yes. So now they're going to go pick him up and a uh, conflict ensues. Country Bears, more like... Wedding Crashers. The only reason Ted Betterhead is successful now is he uses his nice singing voice to sing for events like weddings. But he did not promise to come back with the Country Bears and uh, Barry kind of spoils that surprise by uh, assuming that he was going to because he was lied to. Barry starts blaming himself for the fallout of the Country Bears. Even though it's not his fault, he has nothing to do with it. He's actually the one helping them become friends again. If you've noticed something, I've said Betterhead twice. That's because Ted and Fred are brothers and Fred is not very happy with his brother's choice. So he's going to have a little brotherly talk with Ted. Turns out Ted Betterhead is not rich. Turns out he's just a wedding singer. That party is not for him. I thought that was kind of, I thought that's how he made his money. I think I just missed the point where I thought that was supposed to be his party. Not his party. My fault. I, I'm sorry. I misunderstood. Fred is like, oh, so you're not rich. And he's like, yeah. He's like, and you still don't want to come with us. And he's like, no. So Fred does what any normal person would do or bear would do. And, um, Rocks his shit. <laughs> then you're going. I did not see that coming at all. I thought violence wasn't allowed in kids' movies. Apparently, violence is the answer sometimes. So ever since Ted joins, he's been a little sour puss. He tells Rhodey to stop the bus, which is their bus driver. I don't know if I've mentioned Rhodey yet, but tells Rhodey to stop the bus and they all get out, go to like this random ass field and they all start, com he starts complaining about each and every single one of them. And Barry tries to, you know, talk him into it. And he says like, he talks about how they're a family. And then Ted's like, 
we're not actually family. You weren't there. And then he was like, I know, but your family are people who love you no matter what. When one of them asks, who told you that? And he says, my dad. Then he realizes his dad loved him all along. He ran away for no reason. He had a loving family, minus his brother, who actually loves him now because he's been missing for a few days. <laughs> so Barry literally runs home, like literally runs all the way home. I, he could be in like fucking Utah and his family could be in Wisconsin. He's running home right now. That's crazy. Barry makes it home and his dad is a little excited to see him. Hi, dad. But everybody's happy to see Barry home. Even Dex, who gives him a big hug, is very heartwarming and I love it. He lets them know that he wasn't kidnapped. He ran away, you know, all that stuff, you know. Yeah, you figured it out. The country bears make up when they find one of Barry's notes. Apparently he left his book on the bus, his scrapbook of the country bears, where he wrote a paper about his hero. But he said he doesn't have one hero, he has four heroes the country bears and he couldn't imagine his life without them whenever he's sad he plays a country bear song to make him feel better and he's always sad because his brother bullies him so much this pulls at the heartstrings a little bit and i they decide to come together and be a team again good old ted barrington what is his name better head i always the bees it's so much bees all the bees in this movie ted betterhead pulls up to his house and gives him a little love talk Ted lets Barry know that he's been holding back ang or he's been holding anger for the country bears for some time now and he doesn't know why but Barry's note about the country bears opened his eyes to see that they are better as a team then Barry asks if they're going to do the show now and Ted's like no we can't do the show not without you now Barry is an honorary country bear and he comes with them and they're going to do the show the town hall is saved maybe. While Barry and Ted were going back down to the bus to do the show, Rhodey lets them know that the bus was stolen by Thimple. Thimple now is gone full bad guy, has like a, a bullet sash and a gun and is holding the country bears at hostage. But luckily, Barry left his stuff on the bus. And with that stuff, he left his old collar that I called a shot collar, but it was actually a track collar. I lied to you. I'm a fucking liar. Now with the tracking collar on the bus, they can track the bus to this warehouse that they're in so that the country bears can do their show. So as the family and Ted are going to go save the country bears, we learn that Thimple was actually been planning to take down the country bears for 30 years now. Want to know why? Thimple was the boy, the one boy, the one and only arm singer. They embarrassed him live on TV from the talent show and his armpit singing was not enough. And so he got kicked off the stage and he didn't take it very well. He was a very sore loser, as they said. So he decided... He's just gonna kill the country bears. Why not? Let's just kill the country bears. I'll get no repercussions. Nobody cares about the country bears anymore. They're just stupid little bears anyways. He's not really gonna kill them, but you know, he's gonna lock them inside of a cage so they can't make their concert, so they won't make money, so they can't save the country bear place. I've been talking about it this whole hour and I don't even remember what it's called. Country Bear Hall. So Ted couldn't fit inside the car for the car chase, so they hooked the boat up to the car and just drug the boat with him with Ted in the boat. I don't know why, but luckily for that happening, whenever they tried to save them, they hit like a patch of dirt and that sent the boat flying through the sky, flying through the window and barely, just barely tapping the door, knocking it down. So if I'm thinking correctly, um, bears are pretty strong. So couldn't one of them just like pulled on the door and taking it off the hinges because the boat just barely tapped it like just a little tap and it knocked it off completely anyways the country bears are saved and now they can make it to their show country bears pull up to country bear hall ready to see a big crowd and everybody there excited to see them but um nobody's there mysteriously suspiciously nobody's there so they go inside to see thimple and rip making a small exchange turns out rip was supposed to promote the show but got paid off by the bank and so he didn't so no one showed up so Thimple gives a little monologue talking about the country bears are over, they're dead, no one cares about the country bears no more. But Big Al, oh Big Al saves the day. Big Al's like, wait, aren't you guys doing the show tonight? And they're like, yeah, but nobody showed up. And he was like, what are you talking about? Flip the switch, lights come on, doors open up, big crowd of people, boom, country bears are saved, country bear hall is saved, happily ever after. It's also quite a big crowd of people. I don't know how they hid that many people from the country bears for that long. At least, like, you, you'd think they'd hear them, like, talking outside or, like, see them behind the barn, maybe? <laughs> like, did they just not look back there? Like, how do you miss, like, this big of a crowd of people? It's crazy. Not only did they save country bear hall and make enough money, but they let Barry be part of the Country Bears. He now plays guitar for the Country Bears, and that is just so sweet. Also, you'd think they'd have like a bigger 
bear fan base because you know they are bears but i only see a few in the crowd like maybe three or four in the crowd which i they probably were just expensive puppets so i understand that that part but you know i'm sure cgi was around about the time i bet you it wasn't as good as it is now though i didn't think about that but yeah that was the country bears it's a pretty goofy movie nightmare fuel in some parts when mainly when they like smile and stuff but yeah I'll, honestly out of 10 I give it like a six. It's not that bad, but it's not good. I had a lot of fun just sitting down and watching it. It's a really goofy movie. Some bad jokes. It's obviously made for kids. There's a few adult jokes thrown in there just for fun. Check it out on your own. It's on Disney Plus for free, or you can rent it on YouTube, I think, if you're that interested in it. Thank you for watching the video. I'm finally back. I'll try to be posting more regularly. If you have any movie suggestions, let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, or I'll send my baby bear cub rap group out to attack you. But yeah, thanks for watching the video. Love you. Peace.